Aaron. What's going on, man? Arrow Collins. Hey, how you doing today? Arrow Collins, you there, sir? I am. Can you hear me okay? Yes, can you hear me? Absolutely. I, I, you know, I'm always shocked by the miles between us, and technology has allowed it to make, make it sound like you're next door. It's uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. I'm uh, I'm right down the street from the front here and uh, out on a pleasant walk, so uh, it's even more remarkable than you, you might think. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one of the things that I've uh, become addicted to watching are the videos that you're, you're shooting. That, that in itself, you're giving us the reality of the moment, but at the same time, the people that you surround yourself with, uh, you can see the camaraderie and the collaboration. It's uh, I, it doesn't surprise me that you can you can see that uh, it, it certainly is uh, felt. It's extremely strong, and I'm, I'm glad that you find them uh, insightful. That's part of uh, I, I feel like that's part of our, our job here. There's 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 very few foreigners here. There's uh, uh, you know it's really underserved. It's it's the the only city the Chile Range and the only city uh, that uh, was occupied. And, uh, so, so we, uh, yeah, there, very few journalists come, uh, very few, uh, people know about the place. Part of, part of serving the people really is just to educate so that uh, good people can see, be inspired to help and help. Yeah. If the journalists aren't coming, doesn't that make you the journalist? I wonder about this arrow. I wonder about, these are the kind of questions I want to ask you, uh, um, you know, and I, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just a guy from Kentucky, you know, I'm just, uh, just, a just a small town lawyer. Um, but, but I've tried, I, I, that, that to me, uh, really has been, uh, the big, the big thing. I mean, I, I, how do people, there's not going to be help unless people know that help is needed. Uh, so I've tried to do that in my own amateur way. I'm glad it hasn't been too, uh, too awkward and, and, and insightful perhaps at times for you. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. So has the relief come? I mean, they, they, they voted it, you know, like, oh, let's send more money to Ukraine. Are you seeing anything? Uh, I'm definitely seeing some changes. It doesn't really affect the humanitarian situation. The uh, incidents of there's a lot more. The, the, the Ukrainians are, are, are shelling back way, way more than they were. So we're right here on, you know, we're in Herson, Ukraine, very, very different from all the other places. The uh, front is right down the street. The war's right down the street, about a kilometer from our our little camp here. Uh, the Dnieper River is the is the front line here. The Russians are on the other side. This they're on the left bank. Kherson city pre war population of uh, about three hundred thousand is on is is is, is here. So uh, uh, the the shelling has been overwhelmingly predominant from the Russian side. Now you're seeing it go back that way. In terms of the, the humanitarian situation. Uh, most of that aid is, is military aid. So, uh, uh, but we have seen an uptick in, in the in the return fire. So, wow. Wow. it's it's made it different that way. One of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is, uh, first of all, here in Charlotte, we had uh, somebody take out four police officers this week, and so therefore the war is on our street. How do you wake up or walk around a war when it's every day in your life? It's, you know, it's uh, it's a great question. I mean, it's a great question. I'm sorry to hear about. That. I read about that. Uh, saw saw a lot of your posts and comments on it. Um, you know, it's heartbreaking anytime you, you know, just violence in general. And the, the you know, I, I don't I don't really know. So I, I wake up most days, and at some point in the day, I wonder how the hell I got here. I know the answer to that. I know the answer to that, and it's you know the way you travel a long distance, it's just a little bit at a time, right? So. If, if my first day of service would have been here in Ersan, Ukraine, it would have been absolutely my last. Uh, it was a long journey that took us, uh, that got us here. I mean, I, I bought a ticket for one week to go to the border when the war broke out. I, you know, studied Russian in college. I lived in Moscow 30 years ago, university and before law school. And I lived in St. Petersburg, so I thought, gee, maybe I'll be, I could probably help more than the average person. It's been a while, but I speak Russian. It's rusty. Went to the border, and from that point, it was just like a, I was just kind of shot out of a, humanitarian canon you know with the big organizations not really doing not really handling this the reasons for that are you know too long to explain um if you had a certain skill set you were just catapulted I into it and it, it just propelled you forward so at first it was that then it was back there for you know another another month then it was you know one, one way led on to way you know it met a refugee there it had a unique background ultimately went and got her in, in Kiev. She came and lived with the kids and I back in Kentucky. Uh, she went back. We worked on some projects. 
the people I've met at the border uh, that, that had kind of a, you know, frontline humanitarianism kind of background, former soldiers, former medics, that kind of thing. Those folks went into Ukraine for kind of phase two of the humanitarian effort. Phase one is anybody that can get out of Ukraine uh, getting out. Once the refugee part was done, it was it was uh, about going in. I was not a, a big, you know, I'm a lawyer for Christ's sake. So, but I had become, I had a very visible sort of kind of prominent role at the border somehow. And and these guys were my friends and I was, you know, trying to help them from afar, but really uh, they were overwhelmed, they needed help. They were in Kharkiv in the Far East. Uh, and ultimately, you know, I sort of said, okay, well, let's do this. My buddy, John, who happened to be my paralegal, uh, who had been itching to, to, you know, had seen me do it, really supported the effort, wanted to get involved. So we went over, you know, the two of us in a rental car, not knowing anything. And the whole wow. premise was, we don't know anything. Uh, we're just, but we can follow instructions, you know, and, and we're two guys, one free Russian speaker, which is very rare, a rental car, and we do everything for free. What can we do? How can we help? We arrived in Kharkiv just in time for the counteroffensive to begin. Yeah. So uh, all of a sudden, we're you know people are asking us to do stuff, and we're accidentally learning it. One thing leads to another, and then we're in Bekmo doing, you know, uh, we, we accidentally acquired a skill set, accidentally acquired unique equipment, and then all of a sudden, after this place was liberated, it was the last place liberated, the only big city, we were asked to come down here. Um, we spent really all of our time in the previously occupied territories. This is the biggest previously occupied territory. And from the moment I saw this place, I just, you know, it was difficult processing it. And we relocated here and we've been here ever since. Um, and even when we started here, we started, you know, we were assisting the other organizations, the, 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 the local organizations that kind of sprung up after the occupation. So again, we were just, what can we do? How can we help, you know, uh, two guys willing to show up on time, work hard, increasingly with important experience and language ability that's you know essential here. After six or seven months, uh, it, it, it was it was best for us to set up our own deal. And only then did we you know get the office where we where we got it, got the full time staff, got all the equipment, and that's what we've been doing since. But so kind of a long sorry for the long story, but but I, I have to remind myself that that's that's how we got where we I, all I did was I didn't set out to do anything. I just set out, you know, and this is this is where we are. Wow. Wow. Because I knew I was going to be talking with you today. I'm sure it flooded my daily writing. But on iHeart today, I'm, I'm going to ask the question, and that is, how can anyone heal if all you see is a pile of concrete? It's true. It's very true. It's, uh, it's I, I mean, I love your stuff. I love reading your stuff. I love your, 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 the whole, the whole deal era. It's absolutely, it's profound as hell. So give me a second here to, you know, digest another nugget of life wisdom, but that is absolutely the case. And, you know, the process of healing, the process of, I mean, we heal ourselves when, when we help and, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. That's, that's, uh, you said it better than I ever could. Wow. Okay. Now you, you, you touched on something there when you said, when, when we help, how can we get more people to help you? Well, uh, you know, um, uh, I think just by doing what we do every day, which is highlighting, you know, people, uh, you know, the, the human suffering that exists and, and, uh, and trying to connect that with, with the good people of the world, uh, you know, error, the truth is, uh, first of all, anybody wants to help us, we'd love to help it. it, it it's, uh, it's world aid runners dot org. Uh, in my Facebook page has everything that you know, world aid runners dot org. We'd love to, to get folks support. The truth is, um, uh, you know, we, 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 uh, we're generally self-financed, uh, the support goes to help, uh, you know, the humanitarian aid, basic food, basic medicine, basic hygiene for the folks here. So worldaidrunners.org, we'd love to have that support. But other than that, you know, it's, it's, we also appreciate just the prayers, uh, and the support, uh, and people like you highlighting what we're doing. Um, I think a lot of people help there. I, you know, in the end, my, 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 my take on it, you know, People can only give what they have, and you know the war's going on for a couple of years, and you know people, a lot of folks have given what they've they've they've, they've given. Um, it's really about you know kind of redirecting some of the the the, the big aid that, that goes elsewhere here. But anyway, I appreciate everything everything you do, all your listeners do. Let me let me ask you a question. This you you were definitely in a part of my conversation with my wife last night, and and we we, we were talking about <laughs> oh, Joe. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we were talking about Joe Lindsley because he's been over there now for for over four years, and then and then getting the opportunity to meet you. And my wife goes, 
anybody who is in Ukraine right now has got to be there because God has called them to do the work or the universe is using them as a tool. Is that true? That's how I feel. I mean, that's how I feel. And sometimes, you know, I, 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 uh, sometimes I, uh, maybe feel, I have moments where I feel a little silly for feeling that, but it's, it is in the end, absolutely hundred percent how I feel. Joe Lindsley, absolute great guy. And what he's doing is, is a vocation to it's you know the, the the truth that he's that he's uh he's speaking and seeing and having the courage to to, to view up hand uh firsthand it's absolutely how i feel um and it's easy for me to feel that way because i didn't you know i didn't set out to do anything normally in my life you know I, i'm one of these guys that okay you know i've always been taught dream big dreams see it very clearly and just set out and 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 you know be single-minded purpose and and get there and this is has been the op- exact opposite of that i just uh the circumstances conspired to create it i went to the border for a week and when you see that you can help in a serious way you check boxes that other people don't not because you're better than them mm-hmm. uh but because you're different than them and thank god made us all different uh you know my unique uh background uh previously you know talent skills experience all that much the same way you know i think this applies to joe as well when you see how profoundly uh you can make a difference how unique that is and you see human suffering of that uh scope um there has never been i have never asked myself one time how how can i how how can i do this it's always been how in the world can i not and i i think the same calculus probably uh, applies to joe great guy yeah. your wife is very wise your wife is very wise Arab. that's the school teacher in her she's always asking questions <laughs> <laughs> that probably gets you in trouble <laughs> so now when, when you come back to the united states you're going to see a different nation and and you probably knew and you know what's going on here i don't want to go to work i don't feel like it i'm so bored i don't have anything to do how are you going to handle that mentality when you are doing what you're doing because it's you're going to have to change or or you're going to have to inspire it is really hard and i don't know that i do it all that well i I don't i don't know how to do it i don't know if i want to do it uh so our model has been that we go back and forth and that's you know i've got i've got kids back home and it's sacrificial for me and them and uh, they're very supportive but you know we'll 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 go back to the states in a couple weeks and uh you know especially for the, the the summer months but it's also important for us to kind of kind of heal and rejuvenate uh it's it's super intense and and we're better for the people here over the long haul if we do that but it's difficult when i go back home uh obviously you have an experience like like this um it changes you and you know there are times arrow when i just uh it, it um yeah i mean you have a different perspective i guess this is how i how I think of it. And, and we, you know, we don't really have, I thought I had problems back in the day and I kind of laugh at that now, you know, the things, the problems that I thought I had. Um, I'm just grateful for everything that I took for granted before. Just, just the, the quiet, just the peace, just the opportunity to say hello to folks, to see folks every day, uh, to be about around my friends and their neighbors, the opportunity to, to, to work, that kind of thing. I don't, I don't, I'm working through that. Uh, it's I, I don't have an answer to that. If you figure it out, please let me know. Because <laughs> a lot of things back home seem silly. A lot, a lot of, a lot of, you know. I mean, from my from, from where I sit, and I talk about this with Christina, who's our young U- Ukrainian uh, superhero. She's lived through the entire thing: nine months of being occupied, sixteen months of getting shelled, and you know, here in her son, these are the most grateful, kind, welcoming, compassionate, uh, positive human beings i've ever met in my whole life and they are in the place where you would least expect that and when i'm back home i kind of feel the opposite mm-hmm. we have such abundance but the problems that we we, we kind of create problems that don't exist so when you figure that out arrow please give me a call and, and give me the download because it's hard it is hard to be home there's an adjustment We've got to talk about those videos that you're doing, and I know they're up on Facebook, and, and I, I do want listeners to go watch them and to really look into what you're doing. But but when it comes to long term, and I think this is probably because I've been watching the Bon Jovi documentary, the, this, is, this is stuff for a future documentary. Are you preserving it and saving it here in the States so that when you do come home and you do this documentary, you're not just going to be downloading it from Facebook? 
I am, and I, I have been inspired uh, by your suggestion. I think it was one of the first times we talked. And I've, I really enjoy our talks. And uh, in any way, you, you, you asked that, and I, I hadn't been as disciplined about that as I, as, as, uh, as I am now. And so uh, I, I do think it is uh, – so, so, so I am, and I think it is truth worth telling. And when we're done helping the people that need to be helped, I, it'll be there for, for whatever purpose. So thank you for that, Arrow. Yeah, yeah. When you say you're done, will it be done? There will come a time. There, there, there will uh, the 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 work probably not. I think about that all the time. Um, truth is, here when I'm here, I mean, this is such a profound internal transformation. Um, you know, you can get lost in what, what what happened real quick. But the truth is, it's such an intense life here. These people are in such a difficult situation. I just I remind myself there'll be time for that later on. I can do that on the plane when I'm home. Um, but I but I know I, I know in some fundamental way that I'll never be the same. And I, it's hard to imagine going back to my lawyering days. And um, I don't. Th- th- it will end here at some point. It will end uh, for these blessed people. It will life will return. But but the work probably won't. And, uh, I know deep down, I, uh, feel called to do it. So I'm probably in the process of getting my head around that, but, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's never going to end for you. Right. I mean, this right. is what you do. This is what you love doing and, and you're great at it. And, uh, and you should be doing it and you do it and that's great. And you contribute that way. So, uh, I guess it's just what we're, we're meant to do, right? I, I don't know. I keep telling people that I, I have to do it, and they go, why? And I say, because I don't have the guts or the courage to tell that 14-year-old that's still alive in me that, hey, we're done. Thank you for showing up, but we're done. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to face that kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know. But it, it is, they say, you know, when you do what you love, yeah. you know, it's just, uh, that's a that's a, you can really contribute. You know, you can really contribute. So that's a good feeling. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I absolutely do. So what is that website again so that we can get, you know, get you some help? Uh, it is worldaidrunners.org. Worldaidrunners.org. And there's a link on there. We'd love all the support. 100% of it goes to purchase basic food, basic medicine, basic supplies for the people here. So thank you for the opportunity to plug that. Absolutely. Now, you said you're coming home in a couple of weeks. Can we set up a conversation for that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I would love to uh, hear your Americanized voice on American soil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, absolutely. I enjoy the conversation. I appreciate what you do, and you contribute a lot of light and love to the world. And I've really, it's been a delight uh, to, 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 to learn that too. So I hope the conversation keeps going. You contribute, and if I can help you contribute, I want to do that, my friend. Excellent. Will you be brilliant today, okay, sir? You already have been. I love you, man. Thank you.